Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the meeting, the select board meeting, regularly scheduled tonight. With me on my left is Joe Staub, Tour Nelson to my right, and Carla Nuizel. And um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda tonight, Tour? Uh, I don't have any, but None. I think Joe does. You do, Joe? Oh, could we add um, fire department? Sure, sure. And that's kind of all-encompassing. Do you have a specific time you'd like to add it? Do you want to do it yeah, at Mr. the beginning? Mr. Romay's here, maybe go and do it now. We could do it right at the beginning if you'd like. That's fine. Cool. Okay, excellent. I think you, you're here for Brown's Mill Road. Yes. I was we could, want to do, we could do it after that. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> wonderful. Okay, so we'll start with Brown's Mill Road. That's Res a public comment. Oh, yes, of course. Um, I was concentrating on who was going to go first. Absolutely. Is there any public comment tonight before we go forward? Okay, hearing none, we will move to the Browns Mill Road resident request to update class four to class three. So we have uh, Callum and Hope, Hope. here tonight. Uh, they live on Browns Mill Road and under the class four section and would like to uh, see if that section can be upgraded to a class three. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Absolutely, thank you. Um, sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what to say besides you know the the part of the road that is currently class four uh, has maybe eight houses on it, uh, accounting for about 20 people. Um, we recently over the December flooding time had a culvert blown out and we, we paid for an upgraded culvert and so uh, maybe because of that upgrade the, the road is now more up to spec, up to code for, for being a class three and, and, um, and we have a neighbor who plows uh, and another neighbor who grades the road and the cost for maintaining the road is shared amongst the people that live on the road, but not every person who lives on the road is contributing. I see. So it's just people who feel that they are able to contribute, and some people contribute more, and some people contribute less, and some people don't contribute at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the distance? Less than half a mile. curious because sometimes through the zoning process that has to be a certain amount of, has to be up to a certain standard uh, when there's a number of residents when the number of residents increases or homes increases but mm -hmm. good point what are your thoughts Tim in terms of your familiarity with the area it costs a lot of money I'm, I'm as far as I know through dealing with a couple of the other ones with our other class fours have been asked that it was always turned back to the homeowners that they have to upgrade it before we take it over to a class three. Mm -hmm. um, that road is extremely narrow, runs right on the river. Um, and like I said, I don't know what the end of it looks like as far as like for our turnarounds, but I know it gets pretty tight when it gets behind them's RV. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to kind of just move it and even if we don't go all the way to the very last house, if we go like, you know, four houses from the end or something, or does it have to go all the way to the end? I mean, for me, I'd have to have like you go down. I mean, yeah. we should probably look at it, have you evaluate what the, what the condition of the road is, what it would take to, because typically the town doesn't take over a road unless it meets road standards. But I mean, theoretically, if the homeowners agreed to bring it to that level, it might cost you less in the long run um, if the town took it over. But I mean, that's my thought. Mm -hmm. I well, think a site visit would be beneficial. And just for getting sure. Tim, making sure Tim, at least Tim has you know to, I mean? yeah. Yeah, because like all the culverts, I don't know what's in there for culverts. They all gonna be brought up to 18 inch for the minimum standard now. I mean, 
22 foot is in our policy for the width of the road. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's there's going to be quite a bit of there's going to be quite a bit of money there just to widen the road, and then and then you're going to get into the right of way part. Right. Sounds like they're all like looking for it. Oh. So I mean, they're probably not going to be a fight for somebody to give it. Well, there's going to be some that don't want to give up their land. Yeah. Um, I know that we've had some issues down there before, with just with what we maintain now. Yeah. And right away and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's going to be a. It's going to be a little bit of a. So can I ask We're typically would it, would it be a, the onus be on the land on the homeowners to actually like get somebody to look at it a professional to look at it and evaluate what needs to be done or would that something that you no would you know what I mean we can we can look at it okay. and say it's going to do this this and that. I mean it's the same thing that we did with the Dodge Farm okay they did at the Dodge Farm have an engineer provide um, a statement saying that it I mean they did. They didn't have to do core samples because they did something else and they actually dug through the road and they took pictures of it that it was X amount of gravel, it was this, and, okay. and met the standards and then that all the culverts were at the recommended standard sizing and so. So it seems like that might be the next step is to have that evaluation done um, and because it is a process too. Because if you have to widen it, obviously you have to get easements from the landowners. You know, you have to. You're basically taking land away to mm -hmm. widen the road, and that's a process. So uh, I suspect that the portion of the road that's already town maintained is narrower, or yeah, uh, than the, the portion where we're asking. Where the guardrails are? Yeah, that, that that's 20, 20, 22 foot wide. Yeah. yeah. The, the rest of it seems like it's wider. So maybe it's not. We'd have to look yeah, at it. Yeah, we'll have to look yeah. at it. But certainly something wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm personally willing to uh, sure. go down that road. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at this site map as far as going from class three to class four? Do you know how many houses are on the class three? Just one after the bridge. For, well, when you Technically, go. the one on the left after you cross the bridge is Browns Mill Extension, but Browns Mill has one house on the class three section. Okay. The the line is at the crest of the hill by the first house's driveway. So that first house after you cross the bridge is on the class three, because there's also the one that's like off the bridge. So that's Brown. Yeah, but he's asking for after the bridge. Right. Hmm. So it's the pleasure of the board that we schedule a site visit and put it on a future so. meeting. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And thank you both for being here and for Thanks. discussing it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And you might want, Maybe. I don't know if you guys want to connect or whatever. To, I, well, I guess we can just go down and then. I can go down with the road and, 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 we're and walk down. it and see what's in it for culverts. And, What's Maybe get a copy of, of the standards so that, so they can see that going in going forward. Does have the tour have your email? No. Yes. Should. Right. Excellent. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Any other further discussion on this topic? Hearing none. Thank you so okay, much. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank You're you. welcome to stay if you'd like. But Please do. But you don't. We get not lonely. obligated. <laughs> You're not obligated. But if you want to, you're more than welcome. It's fascinating. <laughs> and now we will turn over to Matt Romei, who's going to discuss the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department and matters surrounding. Thank you for being here, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, Joe has asked me to come and touch base a little bit about some um, recent happenings. Um, first of all, if you haven't heard, we. Uh, We've decided to give Planet Fitness a frequent flyer card, uh, so we can you know, maybe get a coffee after the 25th run. Um, they've had a heck of a problem with their uh, rooftop fire alarm system on um, their HVAC units, 
and it went to the point where we had to involve the state fire marshal this weekend. We ran uh, six alarms there in the Friday to Saturday morning time frame. Six, uh, I'm sorry, Friday to Sunday morning. Um, we are, um, and I, I can't do you remember how many it was in six months. It was somewhere, we are somewhere between 19 and 20 calls since February 1st. So we have uh, an ordinance in the town. Uh, it's actually for, included in your pack. Yeah. Very, um, very four alarms. We've asked the police department to uh, initiate enforcement on that. <clears throat> and it kind of brings us back to a discussion that we had a couple of years ago about updating that ordinance. It's from 2013. And there are some opportunities to update it to not only address the false alarm side of it, but also to address some other um, uh, billing issues, not only between the, uh, the fire department, but also the police department, public works. Um, some of the draft ordinances that we pulled are kind of all encompassing that if you have some e event incident, what have you, that requires town resources uh, to be uh, expended, uh, and you weren't supposed to, then it sets up a mechanism to initiate billing. Um, as it stands now, we don't really have a billing mechanism for that. Um, the police department can issue an ordinance under uh, that town ordinance, and there's a fine that goes along with it, but there are also notice requirements, and the ordinance just needs a little bit of a refresh um, if that is. Uh, the pleasure of the board will we'll dig that back out and um, see if what's changed in a couple of years and see it uh, circulated around and bring it back um, and through whatever ordinance adoption process uh, y'all want to go through. It seems so, wise. Um, yeah, I mean, I was going to bring this up during round table, but it uh, looks to be about Two years or so ago, um, well, first of all, the current ordinance is in your packet. Um, it looks like this, and then so I know Vince was looking at an update, so it uh, never got adopted, but it is also in your packet. I'm not, everybody may not have a copy of it. I don't think I do, think, but that's okay. Um, so I think it's worth taking a look at. And um, I think part of that ordinance also, um, aside from the false alarm component of it, um, it, it takes on something, and I know Williamstown has done this. That's actually where we, um, <clears throat> tactically acquired uh, the majority of that ordinance, uh, you know, R&D, research and development, or rip off and duplicate, take your pick. Best practices. Um, yeah, that's practice. best practices. Best so, practices, I like that. And what we did also is we went out to a vendor that actually does billing and said, you know, what if, if we were to um, initiate this process of billing as a department, you know, can you send us your draft ordinance because they require some of those same things. There's a billing company that um, my department in Alabama worked with, and that's just who we called for information. Uh, they actually have the ability to bill for motor vehicle accidents. If you don't know, you pay for a fire department response fee on your car insurance. And everybody in the state of Vermont that has an insurance policy pays for that. And there's a precious few departments that are actually taking advantage of it. Hmm. Um, and it's not something that really impacts the, the, the rate payer. I mean, I guess it does at some point down the road. But um, there's a fire department response fee built into every insurance policy in the state of Vermont. So the times that we go out and we, you know, uh, clean up the oil or the fluids and those kinds of things, and then we would then be able to turn around and bill for that. Um, the only time that we really bill right now as a department is for hazardous materials response, and that goes through state hazmat. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, so that's it, when you get to reading that ordinance. That's why it has this whole other uh, kind of picture, of, rather than just alarms. Yeah. So I don't necessarily know that that ordinance that we we worked on ever made it this far. Okay, I thought that was what tour. I I think that might be something that Vince was working on. Okay. Um, himself. Yeah, I don't know if this is this is something I found on Vince's computer. So yeah. I don't know. Um, you can have you can have this copy of that. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know, you know, where it came from or how much how close it is you know, being ready for prime time or anything like that. So I see this Williamstown note on Is that something you just wrote? I just wrote. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We'll pull the one that we had uh, that we had drafted and amended and oh, we've still got it somewhere in, in the email. So. so that was that part. The other okay. the can other I, can I just so, ask, Oh yeah, sure. No, I realize oh. this is not really important, but why are they having such an issue with their alarm if it's no one else in them? I mean, is it why is it specific to Planet Fitness? <sighs> So it's a combination of design and deployment. So it, it, you've been in Planet Fitness, yeah. right? So there are smoke detectors everywhere in that store. Well, let me back up. So considering the mall as a whole, the three anchor stores, yeah. so Walmart, Planet Fitness, and Hobby Lobby, are separate systems from the mall. Oh, okay. Every other individual store in there rings through to the mall, okay? Um, but because of the nature and design and everything, those three uh, hubs you. are separate. So the, the, the store is fully sprinkled um, throughout. And within that particular store, every part of that store, except for the main exercise floor, is protected by smoke detectors. So if you look in the back, the stretching room, and I think they call it the 30 minute room, uh, on the right, even yeah. the area right up there over the um, uh, the desk where they have the partition at the ceiling, they all have smoke detectors, tanning room, locker rooms, everything fully and well protected. However, out on the main exercise floor, they, the way they designed it is they're using the duct detectors in the HVAC unit, the roof mounted HVAC unit, instead of putting smoke detectors on the ceiling. So, duct detectors in the HVAC unit, really as they were born, were not meant to be general alarm generating events. What they were meant to do is, is look at that HVAC unit and go, oh, I got a problem, and shut it down. So for instance, the rest of the mall, when we get those alarms, it's usually because they burn a belt up. So it shuts down, it sends a supervisory alarm, which is uh, just a different kind of alarm, but it doesn't blow necessarily the full building. Gotcha. In addition, the duct detectors on those particular HVAC units, where they are installed in the system is on the return air side. So it, everything that would get caught by an air filter is going through those duct, those duct detectors and causing false alarms. So what they have done now at the direction of State Fire Marshal is they've disabled all of them oh. until they come up with something else. But <clears throat> smoke detectors and commercial occupancies are to save property, sprinklers are to save lives. So it's still fully sprinkled. None yeah. of that's impaired. It's just that those particular smoke detectors are pulled out of the system until they figure something else out. Mm -hmm. I'll say this for all the bad, all the craziness it's caused us and having to run up there, including two of our mutual aid departments one morning, um, Planet Fitness has really been, they've really been working hard. Yeah. They've had alarm techs out there in the middle of the night and on the weekends trying to get something fixed and I think finally we've gotten there. I will say that uh, I know Joe's received public communications like this has to stop. Why are y'all up there all the time? So that was part of the was one of the reasons why I wanted to come and explain mm -hmm. 
that kind of thing at uh, you know to the board. So at least they are working on. Yep, well, that sounds good. Thanks for the so. explanation. I appreciate it, and I read the emails that had come through today, so I was able to garner that information as well. So I'm really glad that you were here to present it to us. So. Is the mall responsible in any way, as opposed to just Planet Fitness? Given, I would presume they rent from the mall, correct? They do rent rent from the mall, but it is a Planet Fitness owned and maintained okay. system. Okay. That's, that's important for and, me to understand, so we, thank you. And we jumped up and down and, and pitched the fit a couple of years ago when the mall system, until they you know, had to do a lot of major work up there. Okay. They've done that, and largely things appear to be settling out up there. Mm -hmm. um, we have not had nearly the uh, fire alarm events at Hobby Lobby that I honestly expected us to have. They have a couple of design features in, in that building that I really thought we were going to be up there a lot, but mm -hmm. um, seems to be doing fairly well. Thank goodness. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do you know if the police department was taking any <coughs> action on that? Or? We have been in contact with them. We owe them a couple pieces of information, and they're, they're, they're on it. Okay. So, yeah, there's no... There's no hesitation or hold back on that side. Excellent. Like, yep, get us these three, two or three things and, and we'll get on. Mm -hmm. so, Any other further um, questions for that? Good. Well, we do have one more thing to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, Very one more good. thing within the fire department to talk about, and that's um, uh, water rescue. Um, the Berlin Fire Department back in the early 2000s had a water rescue capacity. Um, we still have that same nearly 20 year old gear, which is um, unserviceable from an operational standpoint, but we use for training. Um, we, especially after the floods last year, the floods this year, <laughs> the flash floods we might have tomorrow, um, separate from all of that, we have responded to four water rescue incidents since December. In the town of Berlin. Mm -hmm. That has absolutely nothing to do with flooding. Um, there is not a water rescue team within Washington County. Berlin and Woodbury both have ice and cold water rescue teams. Ours is still active. We're still trained. We're still equipped. We run a couple of those incidents a year. Anytime we go, Woodbury goes. Anytime Woodbury goes, we go. We're, we're very well integrated with them. We train with them a couple of times a year. Um, we really see a need um, that's not being met right now. Um, uh, More Town Mountain Road was a perfect example. The Connecticut Swift Water Team went up there and got uh, a couple of people. They never rescued anybody. The water was gone by the time they Oh, was there. it? I knew the ambulance had to take some guy out there with a broken ankle. Slipped on the stairs and okay. broke his ankle. Um, but, you know, we see just within the town of Berlin, you know, those four incidents since December. Um, our closest team here, absent flooding, when they stand up a whole bunch of teams and put them out places, our closest team to us is Stowe. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure someone that tumps their kayak over in Berlin Pond in February has that long to wait. So we have, um, we've put three people through, uh, well, first of all, let me back up because we kind of saw the train coming. Over the course of the winter, we did what's called a low angle rescue course. So it's the basic ropes, knots, um, everything up to uh, 45 degrees of angle. We're gonna turn around and do a steep angle, which gets you above 45 degrees up to uh, hanging with no support. That's high angle. We're probably not gonna do that anytime soon, but we're gonna do that steep angle course coming up. Um, Ropes and knots and, and the low angle course, you gotta kinda have some of that basics before you go into water rescue. 
the spring, we've sent three people to water rescue and boat operations course. We've got another five, five going this weekend. That's great. Um, so when you start looking at water rescue, you have surface water and you have swift water. Two different, two different ball games to play in. Uh, surface water is Berlin Pond and post flood, quite frankly. Uh, swift water is the Winooski. Um, the Winooski on the best of days, not even with floods, but on the best of days. So we started looking to see what it would take to outfit um, a team if we were able to put one together. We're also talking to some of our mutual aid partners around us that we work with all the time and said, hey, you have anybody that wants to go play in the sandbox? You know, we, we don't want to take them away from you. We don't want them to take away, away from you from your normal operations, but on this particular kind of thing, would they be interested in coming to training? We have some support lined up locally from um, a large college that will remain nameless, Norwich, that uh, their swim coach is going to work with us because swimming and PFDs and that kind of stuff is different. We've got some support, you know, within the wings of this kind of ready to step up and, and help us not only do this, but do this successfully. Problem is we don't have the gear. Mm -hmm. What's um, the cost? I, I figure it's going to take around $50,000 to stand up a team. Um, I'll just tell you, after looking at um, an eight-person team takes about $15,000 in personal gear. When I say personal gear, I mean the suits and the helmets and the PFDs and you know, when we went, when they go this next week, they'll look at their PFDs, they're so old, they don't have an expiration date on them. They were made before they started putting expiration dates on them. Um, so it's not something I'm willing to put someone in the water with for a, a rescue operation. Um, the other half of that, the other big uh, expense is, is a boat. Oh. <laughs> and they're, we figure we're gonna run about $18,000 by the time you get boat, motor, trailer, and all the other stuff that goes with it. Uh, we've worked with Virgin's Fire, who just stood their team up last year um, to get kind of the boat stuff laid, laid out. And we worked with the supplier for the state swift water teams. Upside of this, if we take this step and we maintain a functional team, we can execute an MOU with the state that allows us to deploy for things like this, but it also means they help us replace our gear when it needs to be replaced. I was just gonna ask if there's any grants that I was that just you're thinking the exact of. same thing because of all the flooding. So uh, there is the Homeland Security grant every year. Um, I'll be honest, it would be a heavy lift to get something off of that grant because they use so much of it up for the replacement of stuff they already have and other projects that, and we honestly, the state of Vermont gets such a small piece of that. I'm wondering, would FEMA assist in any way towards something of this nature? I'm not familiar with that, but I'm curious. I honestly don't know. I know what uh, Mike Cannon, the state USAR director told me, he's like, Matt, if you can get it stu stood up, we'll MOU you. And, it's kind of, some of that is understanding the initial, um, they want to make sure we have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is an opportunity if, uh, if the town wants to support this, and I realize we're a separate entity right now, the town can go to the state for a 2% loan for something like this. The, uh, was it called the equipment, revolving equipment? Loan fund? Something, yeah. yeah. So. Most of the time they're going for loaders and fire trucks, quite yeah. frankly. But <clears throat> at the same time, I think about this, uh, you know, $50,000, I know that's, that's a lot. I can't write that check. But <clears throat> that's really not a lot when you start thinking about we're going to outfit an eight-person team from zero. 
to function. Um, I can tell you if you wrote me a check today, we would be swift water ready for next spring. Ish. Can, I'm confused. Cause you said we do have some sort of water team. So there's two kind of, well, there's, there's really three kind of modes when you talk about this. Ice and cold water. Yeah. Surface water. Yeah. And swift water. Okay. So we have people that are trained in surface okay. water. So, we have so, a couple so, that are swift water trained, but there's a little oh, I was confused from that. the kayak example because I yeah. thought you said we had the ice and cold. So no, I well, get it. Well, we do, but so you wouldn't, so the gear is not the same. Okay. The, the, uh, the Gumby suits, as we call them, for ice and cold water, you don't use those on the surface water. And we don't have those. We've got the Gumby suits. Oh. We don't have the, the surface water, swift water. Okay. So the gear for surface and swift is the same. The gear for ice and cold is the, Makes sense. the, the individual gear. Um, there is a possibility that we're going to see Berry City stand up a team, but they're going a very different route. Um, they're going, uh, from what I understand, with paddles. Um, we can't put a boat in paddles in the Winooski, which quite frankly is a huge piece of our risk in town dealing with this. That's where three out of our four incidents have been. So um, there's there's certainly not an ask tonight. It's a want to put this kind of out there to see where we're going because you know we're going to be in the budget season before too long. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you the other thing is things get more expensive every day. I was just thinking that too. And it's uh, amazing uh, the, the boat quote, if you will, um, from Virgins went up almost five grand from last year to this year for their package. Surprising. So it's really <coughs> not, but that's kind of our thought process. You know, we, um, you know, I guess I'm open for questions. How often would the equipment need to be replaced? What if if we move forward and we outfitted the eight person team and spent that I funds. would what I would like to see best case scenario to keep from having to write this big chunk at one time that we start immediately well one of two things. If we know you with the state, then it's kind of then it's on them. They will replace our gear for us as they wear out. But what I would like to start doing is is adding a much like we do with turnout gear, we buy we buy a setup a year, and then not all of our gear is coming up for replacement at once. Yeah. The other thing about it is, especially after these floods, we go into really nasty flood water in these things. They get replaced. Much like with turnout gear, if we go to a really nasty hazmat, we get a lot of stuff on our turnout gear, it becomes non-serviceable and gets replaced as part of that incident. So. And does that fall under insurance when you have to replace? I'm curious about that too. So I would expect if we were to do something like with this with these floods, mm -hmm. then that becomes part of the town's cost of response to the flood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it's a, becomes a state or a public assistance reimbursable, then 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 you can have that. If we're, I know with us when when we're in turnout gear, if we go to hazardous materials call or something like that, mm -hmm. it's billed back to the uh, shipper. Okay. Good information. Very mm -hmm. good information. Any other questions for Matt? Well, since he's here, and I think everybody knows about this except for Carla, um, as far as the merger, I know you've got a meeting this week, right? Thursday. Yes. Um, One day this week. I think it's Thursday. <laughs> I may be wrong. <laughs> They're all running They're, together, it's, all and it's only week. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at some potential dates, key dates. Um, if we are going to do this, the vote at the November general election, 
Uh, we will need to approve the language at our August 19th meeting. Um, and then there's, um, what I would like to do is have two public meetings, uh, one on a Monday and one on a Tuesday, um, just so we can get as much public outreach as possible um, and, you know, different nights of the week. And I know Tuesdays, you know, maybe, I haven't talked to the chief about this yet, but, uh, you know, maybe we could, um, I don't know. Do it at the station. Correct. Correct. So, um, I mean, I'm open to that. We're, you know, we have to have one, but I'm, I would like to do two myself. But the August 19th is a hard date for the language, language to be put on the ballot. So, um, I'm sure that's going to be part of the discussion. I, I think yes. Janet sent out the dates. I was going to print it out for everybody tonight, but I think Janet sent out the dates because there's a few other things we have to do. But just for clarity, are you wanting to do those public information meetings before or after the 19th? After the 19th. Be, it would be in late October. Okay. Too easy. I'm in agreement with doing it that way, and definitely um, it's wonderful that you bring it forward tonight so that we know those dates and what our hard date is of August 19th for sure. And I'm all for having two public meetings. And I open it up for the pleasure of the board. I like the idea of one of them being at the station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that tour. Anything else for the fire department? I think it's always nice to do one over in Riverton or you know down in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And up here, so it's kind of geographically. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Could be the Grange, could be. Mm hmm Yeah. Grange might be a really nice place. Yeah. You know, and hold additional people too. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very Some much, Matt. Some time we'd like to talk to the you know, down the road. This is definitely not a topic for tonight, but. Um, I know the police department's looking for a, another place to live. We should really look at a, kind of a sequential grant opportunity where you can, we could use the Homeland Security grant to do a scope and design to leverage like an AFG BJA grant to bolt them on to us there at Four Corners. Um, yeah, exciting. Just a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Money? Money takes money, right? Much. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just money. <laughs> right to check. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Matt. This way. Have a good evening. Next up on the agenda is the right-of-way permits for 2810 Crosstown Road. Okay, that's me. Hi, good evening. Welcome. How are you? Good, thank you. We have Bill Warren here with us regarding this permit. And Bill, if you'd like to come forward and, oh, okay. and discuss it with us here at the table, that would be fine. Yeah, uh, basically it's an existing culvert and right-of-way that is pretty shot. And I'd like to redo the culvert and redo the driveway in anticipation of putting the barn at the end of the driveway. <coughs> and what size <coughs> over are you looking to put in? Uh, 30 feet. I had an Avery excavation and they have a con, you know, a contract with them and uh, <coughs> he made a lot of these suggestions and it was a 30 foot culvert. 12 foot wide driveway. And what's a with the culvert? Width is oh, it's <laughs> diameter. Diameter, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, that one. 14? I, I, I'm not sure. It's going to be 18 minimum. 18, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Install 30 foot, 30 inch culvert. 30 inch? Okay. Yep. 
And it lists here that the total project cost is 17000 Yeah, that's the um, driveway and the culvert. The barn would be more. I see. Yeah, okay. so that's just. Yeah. <clears throat> And Tim, do you have any concerns about this? I was just, yeah. No. No, no concerns? Okay. No. It's over our minimum size and 30 feet, and that's what we're, our minimum is. They Very seem good. to know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good thing. Any <laughs> charges? So. Yeah. So Any, this is this this isn't across the road. This is across the this is across no, the driveway. So, yeah. yeah. So there's no road yeah. closure or anything. I can, I'll make a motion to approve the Second. right away permit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And thank you, Bill, for being thank here you. with us and <laughs> presenting that for us. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Oh, good good evening. Evening. I'll email a copy of this to you in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the next up on the agenda is the Three Mile Bridge Road, town. This is uh, Brad Town wanting to replace his cover on his driveway. We have documents here on that. Oh, there's no, yeah, there's the permit application. <laughs> right. Uh, it's a 24-inch culvert. Correct. At the end of the driveway. And Tim has no problems with it. No. None. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve that right away. I'll no second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And I'll go ahead and sign that right now. And next up on the agenda is the town administrator position description update. And I'll turn it over to Tour to uh, provide us that information. So I've included uh, a copy with my comments on it, uh, or my thoughts on it, and back it. Um, one thing I would like to do is increase the financial, I'd call it literacy, of the town administrator um, over what we've had in the past. Um, my predecessor um, was very hands-off when it came financially, and um, I don't think that's a I don't think that's good for, you know, what we as a select board need to do as far as our fiduciary responsibility. Um, so, so my additions, or proposed additions, on the top of page two in red, uh, develops and implements financial and internal control processes. That probably needs to be clarified. Bad, bad grammar there. Uh, to, to enable the select board to carry out their financial oversight and then serves as primary contact for the town for any audits and, re, and reviews conducted on the town to ensure proper segregation of duties. And we're going to talk about more segregation duties as we get into the um, audit findings. And then at the bottom of page three, under qualifications, um, general knowledge of government. And, governmental fund accounting practices, ability to interpret financial statements and reports, and ability to develop and administer a budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I think that's um, wonderful. So I don't know what other thoughts you all have on the town administrator position. I, I would add that over time, you know, perhaps not immediate, but I see the position becoming a town manager um, down the road. Right. Uh, we've definitely discussed it over time, and um, I think these are all great additions to yeah. what is needed, and our town is expanding so greatly uh, as our, our budget. 
Yep. Joe, what were so, you going to add? Yeah, I was going to add. So I, I think we were going to be going for a town manager position. And, and I think we just, I don't know, maybe fell short in, in, in presenting it that way. Do, do we see this happening this year, next year? I would say probably next year at the earliest. I do think it's something we need to pursue. Um, the attorney has provided some language on it, but in my opinion, made it overly complicated, which is why we didn't do it you know, when we did the options tag. Okay. So, mm -hmm. something I do think we should pursue, but. And I'm in concurrence I too, I think. And we didn't really know what like to do. Next year. Um, you know, with Vince being gone, didn't want to change his job on him while he's gone. But now I think we got some clarification which direction we're going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we can start building that into mm -hmm. our processes. Yeah. So you're thinking the the if we were to propose that again, we wouldn't vote on that until this this March because that's be voted on, right? Is Correct. That, so. Correct. Or the following, you saying 25 or 26? Uh, I'm thinking maybe 26. Um, <clears throat> just hopefully to get somebody on board and push it off on them to <laughs> work on it. But mm -hmm. don't want to say, oh, oh, by the way, we're changing your job on you in two months or something like that. So I think it's definitely important to go over, make the changes publicize, interview, everything that goes into it, you know, hire and then from there make the determination how things are going in the time frame and, you know, who we hire and what they're willing to to do as well. Mm -hmm. And their capabilities and skill set. But I think this is absolutely wonderful what you've done so far. And we can all come together with other additions. Yeah, I honestly intended to look at all that last week, but my week blew up, so I never did. So mm -hmm. I will do my best to, to look at it one night this week. Same here. Last week was intense, so I'll have more time this week for sure. Thank you, Carla. Any but, other? But I do like your addition store. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, and then in your packet, I know you mentioned at the last meeting you'd seen something on embezzlements or something oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so I included in your packet the Mar Marquette report, um, which was an outfit. Uh, it used to do a yearly report on embezzlements. Um, apparently he hasn't done it for like the last 10 years or so, but I included one of the previous ones in the packet, email packet. Oh, um, email. Okay. Um, okay. That showed, uh, you know, Vermont, I think was number one per capita for embezzlements and stuff. I mean, when I first got on the select board, going to the trainings with the league, um, you know, that's something they were very much harping, I don't say harping in a bad way, but hounding us on emphasizing. <laughs> yes. Adamant about <laughs> that, um, you know, that we needed to, you know, as, as select boards that, that we needed as our duties is to um, really pay attention to that, mm -hmm. so. Good, yeah, I like that. Excellent. Any other discussion before we move forward? Okay. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And um, that is the Local Hazard Mitigation Plan Consultant Award. Okay, uh, so we're required to uh, complete a local hazard mitigation plan every five years. Uh, our five years is coming up next year, and we've received a grant from the Vermont Emergency Management to assist us in preparing that plan. Um, we went out to an RFP. Uh, on that, uh, received four proposals back, one from OPH Consulting for $9,256. Uh, that's uh, Paul Luciano who completed their last uh, plan, mm -hmm. or current, I guess their current plan. Current plan. Uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission for $9,434. 9, 
uh, Seam Consulting out of Orange for $9,600. Stephanie Mangan, uh, she's worked for VTrans. I don't know if you knew her. I don't know if either of you knew her. Uh, she's also, I believe, the chair of the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and then Safe Work, which is out of, I think it was Texas, for $9,804. Uh, my recommendation is to go to, with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, um, and I will make that motion. I'll second. And that makes sense, being that they did our current plan, and they're also the lowest bid. Well, they're not the lowest bid, but... Oh, I thought um, they were. No. Uh, that Paul Luciano came in lower, but um, the RPC has done a lot of other plants in the region I see. Um, and I think you know a lot of these items need to take a regional approach yes um, yes I see that now so yes I, and I think that will come that makes total mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. and, and handy yes yes I agree <clears throat> thank you all those in favor aye aye motion carries and next on the agenda is the FY 2023 audit response uh, so here again, I included a draft copy of the audit uh, in your email packet. Um, in it, there were three findings on the part of the town. Uh, the first one uh, deals with segregation of duties, uh, which basically, uh, you know, basically means you're not allowing one person to do all the tasks where they where they could hide things. Um, this has always been an issue with the town. It's always going to be an issue with the town just because of our small staff. Small staff. Yeah. Um, but we have taken some actions in, in the past couple of years, you know, with the addition of the assistant treasurer now mm -hmm. and uh, getting her up to speed and everything. Um, the other two findings or proposed findings dealt with uh, recording of long-term debt and recording of grant proceeds. Um, and talking with the auditor today, because um, I was basically like, you got to explain this to me. I have absolutely no idea what you're saying. Yeah. And she goes, well, after looking at this again, we're going to take those two out of the audit report. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't want to make it, I'm not challenging you on them. I'm just, I honestly don't understand what you're saying in this. And she goes, nope, I'm, I feel fine. So we're, we're down to the one remaining um, finding, which is the segregation of duties. So I have um, put in your uh, packet um, Some new procedures we are, we are going to be implementing tomorrow for at least on a trial basis to see how well they work. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to, I, I want, um, well, first of all, all invoices are going to come th to me. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be in the uh, noon Thursday before the meeting. Great. Um, they will then be given to the assistant treasurer um, Thursday afternoon to be entered into Nemeric. Mm -hmm. The treasurer will then print the checks and the warrants by noon on Friday. Um, and then we'll put the printed warrant uh, so that it can be included on your in your packet when it's mailed out. So you're not looking at the warrant mm -hmm. five minutes before the meeting start. You'll have it a couple of days before the meeting. You know, yeah. give you a chance. And we're not going to mail all the, you know, the checks, but no, the, the warrant the, itself, the, three the page. printed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give wonderful. you time to look at that. Um, and then once approved, the treasurer will assign, will, will sign the checks and uh, any check over 5000 gets counted signed by the treasurer mm -hmm. and then the assistant treasurer will actually mail out the check so splitting the duties back and forth so that nobody really has a chance to slip anything and or if something does 
gives a chance for something to get caught and you know invoice doesn't get paid or something like mm -hmm. that and then on the account reconciliations uh, the assistant treasurer will perform the uh, bank reconciliations yeah. um, and then we'll provide the completed report to the treasurer for approval and then that will come to the select board for approval at the second meeting of the month um, along with any uh, voided checks uh, for final approval so that, that we oh. so that way we have you know several eyes on every you know the whole process at several times mm -hmm. several key times during the process sounds good can I just ask though it says the invoices have to come directly to you who's coding them how are they getting coded? the uh, department head oh okay the so police chief for oh, okay. the so oh, other... you didn't know that Tim so Tim hasn't seen this yet so there's nothing that would be outside of those two arenas though how well, there'll be other invoices, yeah. Probably, well, probably me or Callie. Okay, because I'm just, it, it's to say they can't be sent directly to them if they have to be coded, that's just kind of a, that's the only thing I see that might need clarification. Okay. Is, you know, who's doing the coding if it's something that goes to the treasurer, t mm -hmm. typically, as opposed to Tim or the police chief. And the only so other she shouldn't be paying anything that doesn't come through me already. Or, right, or but you're I'm saying it process. has to be submitted to you properly coded for approval, right. and it can't go directly to them. But if they have to code it, it's just it's that, that's the only thing I, th I see that needs clarification. Okay. Yeah, and then the only other question I have is, what about do we create invoices? Outbound invoices, yes. we do. So that's where I think we need the next process, because that's where people can also do funny things. Mm -hmm. Is when you're creating right. invoices. So that, I think that's the next. Step is creating something for, for that mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. but this, but no, I think this is good. And then we also have to factor in vacations and time out of the office, and yeah. you know, as part of this, you know, what will be done and how to keep this on schedule when folks are out. Mm. Yeah, but that looks yeah. But um, so we do have to respond though. to the audit, and so I will type. I'll basically type something up like this in yeah. a narrative format. Okay, good. Uh, and sent to them, so. You bring up a good point that even though they left this one item on, you know, we do have a small staff and we did add the assistant treasurer, right. which is good. Right. But no matter what, doing this is a huge win. You know, yeah. it's just it's a positive forward, yeah. and it's what should happen. And I'm all for and it. And it protects Well, invoices are coming does. in from everywhere. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we've yeah. seen instances where they get lost so get lost <laughs> and not get paid and and it's caused you know it's caused issues and stuff so mm -hmm. I will be keeping a I don't know what form I'm doing it handwritten or Excel but I'll be keeping a itemized listing of all invoices coming in so how much effort is it going to be for some of these department heads to code them well Somebody does does it already. You do basically. Yeah. You code them all. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a purchase order book, so I mean, you might be changing that as well. But <laughs> that 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 three part book you sent back. You want it? You might be having to get it back. That's fine. Well, I just <laughs> had no use for it. That's why I didn't want it. I have a purchase and order book, so when I fill out my bills. Fill out purchase and order slip. I stamp it. Code and you see, you'll see them on yeah. attached to it in there. I send the white one with the invoice and everything else to the office, and I keep a yellow one over there. So if there's any discrepancy on whether yeah. it was there or not, I can at least go back. And I've got two years worth of yellow papers over there. So all day, yeah. I had to go back and look for stuff. Hmm. Thank you for being thorough. And the FY, now we're just talking about the FY23, uh, June, you know, ending June 30th of 2023. Um, we do have the FY24 audit scheduled. The on site portion will be October 16th, 17th, and 18th. Okay. Any 
Any other discussion regarding the audit response? Hearing none, we'll move forward. So next on the agenda is the Payne Turnpike North Design Engineer Possible Award. So we have, um, we're using the, what VTrans calls at the ready process, mm -hmm. where they um, pre-qualify uh, certain engineering firms for, for different aspects of the, of the project. Uh, we utilized that process for our uh, municipal project manager with uh, Stantec and using again for the design engineer. Um, we have settled on uh, CHA um, engineering out of uh, Albany, New York and have sent them an RFP. Uh, it's, it's Cloud Harbor and Associates LLP. Um, they have submitted their proposal uh, $260,243.41. Um, this still has to be approved by VTrans um, with a proposed contract. So I would, I move that we accept the uh, proposal from Plow Harbor and Associates condition on the approval of the trans. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for that tour. Okay, and next on the agenda, and we're pretty much right on time, um, is the local options tax, select board adoption. So, um, and I handed out to you the copy of the, uh, the charter um, as approved by the legislature and the governor under 32 powers of the town, P1. Uh, it says the town of Berlin select board may assess 1% sales tax, 1% rooms tax, and 1% meals and alcohol beverages tax. Uh, so the next step is for us as a board uh, to take that action. Um, I would prefer that this be done with the full board um, just because of the, I don't say grave nature, but just because of the big nature of this action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll hold off on this until our next. Can I just ask what this means? May assess, what does that mean? Do we set a date? I mean, what are, what are we supposed to be doing? Well, I think we just have to vote to approve, oh, okay. to, to, I guess, to oh, okay. implement okay. the options tax, yeah. And by waiting, we can include Brad, and I agree. I think it would be I, I wonderful think, to, for all of us to be here. I think this is a decision that the, the chair at least needs to be here. Absolutely, yeah. we were all heavily involved, and I, I think that that is why. So we, um, do I hear a motion to postpone this until uh, all of the board is present and most likely we can just table it. We just table, table it. it. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. Um, do we decide when it when it comes into like when it starts or how does that work? Like the, that the, would be part of the okay. implement. So that would be that, part, of the part of the the, okay. the motion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. And I, I did find today that KFC does charge the buckle options tax already. Mm -hmm. How are they doing that? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I just went on DoorDash and typed in a fake order <laughs> and they're charging me the 10%. Huh. And Chewy does as well. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But that's. That's discussion we put on the economic development that. commission. It must be Barry, huh? <laughs> it, it's a it's a Barry zip code down there. Yeah, for it, it is for many of the businesses. Of mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Okay, that might be a long conversation. So now we'll move on to the public works board appointment. Uh, so Ted Long um, was a member of the public works board. Uh, lived on Hotaway Drive. Has moved to. Barry, I will keep my my editorial comments to myself. Uh, so there is 
Well, actually, technically there are two vacancies on the Public Works Board. Uh, I'm William, William Wolf, a uh, resident on Waterworks Way, uh, former police chief and also former uh, select board member from Barry Town has uh, expressed an interest and his email is in the packet and I move to appoint William Wolf to the Public Works Board uh, term expiring March 31st, 2027. That's second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And next on the agenda, we have the licenses, permits, vouchers, application warrants, approval, and approval of the minutes. So we'll start with the licenses, et cetera. Is that the script? It's payroll. I think it's both of them, isn't it? What's that? I think it's both of them, isn't it? Yeah. Payroll warrant 25-01 for payroll from June 30th. 2024 to July 13th, 2024, to be paid on July 17th, 2024, in the amount of $70,060.66. To continue, uh, pay, payable warrant 25G1 um, with check number 240. Nine six to twenty four one two nine in the amount of fifty six thousand seven hundred fifty nine dollars and eighty six cents. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank I you. I would very much. note that the water and sewer bills in the warrant were masterfully entered by yours truly. I learned how to enter invoices in the memory today. How's that feel? Good for you. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Never do it much. again. <laughs> uh, we do not have any minutes. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to the round table, Joe. Um, so talk to a couple um, town residents over on Richardson Road and I know at one time we were talking about expanding the, the sewer line and it just with the project on Payne Turnpike North, it wasn't uh, financial, financially sound to, to expand onto Richardson Road. Moving forward with replacement of that bridge, um, the town residents on Richardson Road and I think Birchwood, Birchwood, um, they would be very interested in maybe pursuing that again when we move forward in putting that bridge in. So I think that would be probably with the public oh, works board. Public yeah. works board. Yeah. Okay. Probably will have to be a pump station. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. It, there would be no better time than when you put that bridge in. At the present to whatever they come up with for a design. Yeah. To slide that all in there. Thank you both. At least run the line across. Yeah. If it's stubbed across over in the road somewhere, you can at least tie into it in the future. Good point. Good forward thinking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Carla? Um, I will just say that I, uh, from the DRB and the Planning Commission, um, there will likely be some proposed changes to the zoning coming forward. Uh, the Planning Commission hasn't discussed it fully, but um, the DRB has sort of found some quirks with the zoning, and, and I attended the Planning Commission meeting to talk about those, and they seem amenable uh, to pursuing or at least discussing some of these changes. A lot of it has to do with uses in certain districts, and mm -hmm. I mean, as being, uh, you know, I was obviously <laughs> part of that process throughout, and I, and I can't recall some of the reasoning for why we excluded or included various uses. For example, um, or, or, or it may be redrawing lines. For example, the airport road, you know, there's a lot of residences over there, but it's 
technically residences aren't or, or, or single family homes aren't permitted. Mm -hmm. So it's creating a situation where there's people wanting to build in an area that is does have houses. So it may 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 include either redrawing the lines or changing it to a conditional use. But anyway, things like that, just things that we've we've come to, come to this like come to the DRB that just don't make sense in the zoning. So doing some tweaking and it'll probably be coming before us in the next few months, I would imagine. Very good. And I may have a couple other... Tweaks? <laughs> I'm going to call them all clarifications. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. And I think, I don't have my notes from the DRB anymore, but I know in the past some of the applications come yep. up, you know, what does this mean, what does that yep. mean, and I try to flag you on that. Well, yeah, because we had to do. I, I don't think I have those anymore. Well, if you think of them, because I, I mean, I definitely suggested that you know, uh, Rob, uh, Bob be consulted because he keeps lists like that. I'm sure too before we move forward, because Bob wasn't at that meeting. But, mm -hmm. um, but the planning commission, you know, I think they they want to look at. So, if anything that's to be brought forward, it's a good time to do it. At, you know, at the same time, but that requires several public hearings and whatnot. So. It, it definitely isn't going to happen overnight, but it's just something that they, I think they're going to start working on, and I'll keep you updated. I'm trying to attend the meeting so that I can bring issues forward that are happening at the Planning Commission. That's great. So Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much. And tour, anything for Roundtable? Oh, I don't think I do. Okay. And I just have... Mm. Go ahead, Joe. I wasn't sure. See, I was out of town all last week, and, and so with the previous flooding, and I know we didn't get... Uh, hit as hard as we did a year ago. Um, I guess I wasn't sure if you all had had a meeting updates on on roads or other issues that might have come up. That's what I was. You were reading my on. mind too, and mm -hmm. okay. Throw a little bit in there. Yes, please. So, like Joe said, we were very, very, very fortunate. Mm -hmm. compared to surrounding areas. It ain't even a half a mile difference between Lake Bartlett Hill and Jones Brook and it looks like a bomb went off over there and I mean we didn't lose hardly any. Bartlett Road was the worst one by any means and that was a plug culvert from a bunch of tree debris that came out of the woods and we're going to remedy that problem this summer. Again, try to gonna upgrade that culvert one more time from a two footer to a three or a, thir a 30 inch but we we didn't lose the gravel this time it all just kind of piled up at the bottom of the hill so we were able to take the excavator up reclaim it all clean it up put it back in where it came from we bought a couple of loads of extra dirt for what we did lose um, that was the worst with the end of the bridge down by brad's took a little bit, but we fixed that first thing so people could get out in different areas down there, but um, pretty much everything is, you know, I mean, almost 100% passable by all means. We have a few culvert ends that we're gonna address. They're kind of down on through all bridge road, junction road, trying to stay out of there for the dump truck train that's going up Jones Brook, so they have free reign of the road, trying to get more towns roads back so people can get in and out of their houses up in there. So I'm trying to just stay out of their way. There's nothing down there that, you know what I mean, causing any issues. So we're just going to let it go through. They're, they're hoping to be out of there tomorrow or maybe the next day. So first thing next week, we're going to go down there and address the few problems that we have down there. We lost some gravel from uh, where the brook comes down from Jones Brook. It just kind of went all the way through Brad's fields down there and it just took the top of the gravel off the road and put it out in the cornfield. And um, We have one spot, like the phone call earlier was the river management guy. Um, we're gonna have some a little bit of work, I'll clarify it more with him when I can actually talk to him on the phone up on Cox Brook. The brook got turned out in last, brook got turned last year, but it was way out of our right of way. And uh, I spoke with Tor last year about it and I met with the river management people and they were kind of just, let it be for now, 
-hmm. But um, Thursday morning last week, it's right up to within two feet of the road now. So we're gonna, by the sounds of it, be able to go in and at least pull some of the gravel out, get the brook set back over, and then have the stone line and key a bunch of stone in there and armor the bank. So it should, and then it should be good after that. So we have a few little projects to do with it, but by no means are we anywhere as close to where we were last year. I really appreciate and everything that you've done, and I thank uh, all of the forward thinking and the preparations, both yeah. you and your staff, and Chief Staub and the fire department, you know, uh, anticipating what could happen, and we were, are very, very fortunate, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that you brought it up. Uh, um, I was going to mention it as well, but this is wonderful and it's really great to give everyone an update of where things stand but thank you both so much and one other thing I just want to interject and then Joe too um, if you want to add some additional but I just wanted to add that our governor is urging anyone affected by the flooding damages and specific to Washington County other counties as well but specific to our county um, to report any anticipated or damages um, call night uh, 211 um, and that basically assists toward a declaration you know um, and so so I thought that that would be good to announce tonight because some people may not be aware of that um, and I did see another announcement today so I've seen it in numerous numerous locations and, and if we don't want to call, you can, there's an online form oh, good to know. that you can fill out. Great, great, thank you. Does the county you. owners count toward that, or is it just residential? It's everything, I believe, it's combined. But like we were having a conversation earlier, Washington County would just have to qualify for a million dollars worth yeah. of damage. And rough guess, I bet you, more towns come to close oh, to five million. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So and I would add, they said it doesn't matter the amount of no. damage, definitely report any damages small or large um, because everything matters so yeah. yeah thanks also to her for mentioning about the 211.org and joe going back to bartlett did, did we have with with last year's flooding we, we had debris coming out of the woods as well because mm -hmm. the the brook above jumped its bank and just brought up all this debris but was it the same culvert that might have given us an issue last year that well, you were talking about we maybe? had every culvert yeah. had an issue last year this year it was just it's just there's a lot of hemlocks right in that culvert area and wasn't sure if you, you thought about like a debris catcher of some sort and would that even i just upsizing help? it we did it so that was what caused most of the problems on widow moses last year was the culvert size and it had a two footer in there. I went to a 30 inch this year, or when we replaced it, fixed it, went to a 30. It's large enough now that the sticks and the stuff will go through it and it doesn't pile up on the end of it. That one was absolutely perfect this year where this one, it's, it's not really, where it is isn't really feasible. It kind of is like a little ravine. It just comes, it's just a natural funnel to where that culvert is and, okay. um, I think some of it was there was a tree that had fallen up on the property that I mean, has since died, rotted, and it picked up quite a bit of that. But Did we get a chance to, to stone line those ditches? We haven't yet. We're okay. still working through everything. And that, the stone lining those ditches would, would fall under last year's flood? Yeah, it's all it's all part of it. Like okay. We've been going through it with FEMA. And, the the big hurdle on that one was is they were they were hesitant at first and talking like nobody would give us a definitive answer because the work wasn't performed last year whether if it was performed this year whether we were going to be reimbursed for it so we had a lot of and then the multiple switches of the people from FEMA we went through four of them in a matter of months and every time it was a start over because. Yeah. They didn't know or couldn't gain access to the previous person's work and um, I mean all that stone lining 
is, I mean, I have a bunch out here stockpiled, and uh, it's all going to get done before this fall. Because they finally kind of just came out and said, just do it, and we'll reimburse you for it. So we have the stone lining up on Widow Moses Bartlett Road to do in the steeper hill sections. Um, and then pretty much at this point I've got the whole month of September set out for we got roughly about 9,000 ton of gravel put down from last year that we to put everything back to where it was post flood so that's four inches thick the whole width of the road is kind of what their standards wanted Awesome. Joe? Joe? Going from, from flood to regular summer maintenance, um, have we moved forward on uh, mowing our roadsides? Or? Yeah, we, it's, it usually doesn't get done until the middle to the end of July every year anyway. Okay. And then I'm not sure. I haven't reached out to him. Don L. Dexter is the guy that mows there long. He's also the city foreman for the highway department so I'm sure after last week he was a little busy this week and they usually gets to it about this time every year so yeah and it's going to be two passes on everything this year like we've kind of discussed about last year so all the dirt roads are going to get two passes good sounds good thank you nice. good question thank you Tim yes Kudos. And are we anticipating an executive session tonight? I do not. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn unless there's any other discussion or questions or concerns. So looking at me. <laughs> you must have something else. Do I see the <laughs> hand going? I'll move then. I'll move. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Thank you all so much. And thank you.